If you missed it, Chris Johnson won the first TAA fishing tournament with no forward-facing sonar. And congrats to the Touring Anglers Association for putting on a pretty successful and refreshing event that I think a majority of people enjoyed. Now, there's been lots of people that have asked, where are the forward-facing sonar people? Why didn't they join? Why didn't Randy join? There are a lot of reasons. I don't know. There's also a lot of people saying, well, isn't forward-facing sonar as bad as bed fishing? I don't know either. I don't know if there's a happy medium. That's the problem that ha is happening right now. They're either you're for forward-facing sonar or you're a against it. And while I wouldn't have it personally, if I was a professional fisherman, I would know it to the greatest detail that I possibly could because it gives you an advantage having said that. But this tournament with Touring Anglers Association, which is a tongue tie for me this morning, was very nice. It was, like I said, it was refreshing to see. And they had a, not a great turnout, but they didn't have a bad turnout. 47 Anglers joining was really kind of successful. And there was some huge names that showed up. It was nice. And I think a majority of the fans found it quite nice to watch, even though there was no streaming. But the live weighing was de was decent. And those guys that collaborated together to put the weigh in have to get a lot of credit. So go support them. They were Fish North Georgia, Bass 365, Angler's Channel, and Advanced Angler. Thank you for doing that for all of us. It was fun to hear your commentary, and you guys did a pretty good job. Also, the final day had a bunch of anglers stay back and become marshals for the top 12. And the top 12 ended up coming out with, of course, Chris Johnson winning, David Williams in second, Emil Wagner, Drew Cook, Jared Littner, Corey Johnston, Kaz Anderson, Gussie, Rob Jordan, Joey Fuentes, William Fletcher, who I just found, I didn't realize he was with the NPFL, so congrats to him, and Jimmy Millsaps rounded out the top 12. Those guys and other anglers did have to participate in some polygraphs, either on day two or day three, which adds a little bit more credibility to what TAA is trying to accomplish. But there's always some pros and cons to every event. I've been critical about bass and major league fishing, the Bass Pro Tour and NPFL. And while this is just my opinion, that's all it is. You don't have to do anything with it, but this is just some of the things I saw as a fan. So to start off on day three, the crowd work you did, you guys were like a stand-up comedian, handing out things, giving the kids some stuff. I really like that. Trying to get kids introduced into the outdoors is something very important to me and to the success that we have for the bass fishing industry in the future. Now, while most people are gonna say, isn't the video game kids, they're gonna do well with forward-facing sonar, probably. But you wanna know it's, we still have to get kids into the outdoors. So giving out the little gifts and the hats and the worms and that kind of stuff is really a great touch and shows the kind of people that you guys are. So kudos to that. Next, on day one, I saw a lot of Facebook posts with vertical stuff, kind of giving each angler maybe a little bit of time to talk about what was going on and what they were doing. I really, really like that too. I, While you weren't streaming, which is probably a little bit of a con, but also if you're going to stream, it's going to cost a lot more money to take away from the overall pot, which is another whole story. But having those little clips of the one minute or two minute and putting them on Facebook was really positive. I, I, I want to see how things are going as the day goes on. So this was another positive positive thing for me. Next, I appreciate that you guys gave it up for the collab that was streaming it live. There are way too many people that just like to take shots at others if they're not in the limelight. I think giving the those guys Fish North Georgia, Bass 365, Angler's Channel, and Advanced Angler, giving them the credit that they deserve for what they were doing is really a show of class. Now it has to be about the anglers, but the people who are helping put that event on also deserve a pat on the back. So while I don't know any of those guys from those channels, thank you for doing that. And while we're on there, having those guys do that collab and then putting it on a Facebook and YouTube, there was a good amount of people that watched the weigh-in. I, I was really overly surprised by the amount of people that watched the weigh-in. There was a large group of people watching it and you had a good crowd there also, which was fun to see too. And overall, while you're gonna get people that don't like the bed fishing or whatever, you wanna know what, you did a really good event. Now, could there have been more anglers? Yes. Is there a way to improve on little things? Yes. This is a, probably gonna be a learning curve for you. While the, it's your first one, I think there were a lot, there were a lot more positives than negative in my opinion. And I really would have liked to seen more streaming from the guys doing on the boats. I would have liked to seen more Joey's out there streaming his stuff live. Is that something you can do? I don't know because it does take time and effort and everything else and it also takes away from them fishing and they're in a fishing tournament so can we get some more streaming going on let's hope so in the future
Now, I have to set some pros, and I like I said, I think there's more pros than cons. I think one of the cons would be, I don't know if $5,000 isn't too much for the average angler. Now, I say this, and I realize it's almost a double-edged sword, because you have the pro anglers that you want to have that will bring in the names, but you also want those average anglers to be able to come in and fish. I don't know if that works. I mean, at the same time, if someone can afford a bass boat, you would think they could afford the, the tournament entry fees. I'm not sure the tournament entry fees couldn't be a little bit lower and still have the success that you want, but at the same time, you want that pot as big as possible to bring out the best of the best. So like I said, while it's a pro, it's a con also. And quite honestly, I don't know if there's a, a happy medium there. I don't know. Next, only because I've seen the comments on my channel, people are not really happy about going bed fishing. And it might just be a few people that don't like it. And they think it's just as bad as forward-facing sonar. And I respect their opinion about that. But in the future, it would be great to see y'all go to a place where it isn't spawning time. And I say that from a conservation point. While I still want to see giant fish caught, and I think the bag limits that you had were unbelievable, I'd still like to see, I'd like to see the next tournament at maybe a different time. But I'm not making up that decision. Thank goodness. And last, I would like to see you give a little bit more time or a little bit more spacing between the final 12 anglers. I would like to, as they're on stage, for them to not only get credit for what they did, but also hear how they were catching every fish, uh, what they used, give, allow them to have their sponsor time, and really be able to dive into how they fished. And I think it just happened so fast that not a lot of questions could have hap happened the same time this was your first tournament and I kind of give you a lot of grace on that because it is tough it's tough to do all the stuff that happens I've never done something like that I don't want to do something like that but I can see where getting the angler in letting him talk and still keeping it flowing and in a reasonable time would be would be challenging but I'd like to see the angler get a little bit more screen time at the weigh-in, especially if the weigh-ins are being streamed. I think you have to give the angler an opportunity to promote his sponsors because the sponsors are helping pay him and he is paying you to fish. So again, it's a happy medium and where do you go? But overall, I thought the, the whole tournament was really quite nice. It was fun to see a bunch of anglers put their money where their mouth is. And I mean that from one to 47. Anybody who fished that tournament gets my a little pat on the back because it was, it is, they put their money where their mouth in. And and really, the Canadians kicked our asses. We need to have a Canadian team versus a U America team. That's what needs to happen. Canada versus USA because that would make it a little more challenging and a little more fun too. So do me a favor and comment below. Do you think they should continue? Do you think there's changes that need to be made? Comment those changes in the comments. I respect everyone's comments and opinions and it, there's a lot of respect. I don't mean to disrespect anybody and I hope you guys appreciate it. Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. It might take I might take a little bit of a break here but I'll see you soon. Cheers.